We're going to finish chapter six today. Um, you've all handed in your notes, I guess. Okay, so we're going to finish chapter six and then go over the exercises. Does everybody have the exercises ready? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Vivian, are you hesitating? Because I don't, I don't know how to write the exercise. The yes. Okay, we'll go over it in class. Let's finish the chapter. <clears throat> and whose turn? I think we're on 155. Is that right? Uh, 155, uh, last paragraph. Mm -hmm. Learn to produce a series of sounds with different voice onset times. Start by producing fully voiced stops, but uh, see how long you can make the, you can make, make the voicing continue during each of these sounds. Very good. Isn't that the part that we read last time? I put a little mark here. Yeah. And there were two things I reminded you of, and I'm going to remind you again. First of all, what do we have to watch out for in the word voiced? Right. The O part should not be too long. I still hear voiced, <laughs> voiced. And they do make it longer in British English, like I said before. And it also sounds a little southern U.S. Voice. He has a nice voice. So it sounds a little southern and a little British. Um, but in standard American or general American, it's voiced. Voiced. Make it really short. Everyone voiced. 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 Mm -hmm. And what was the other thing I noticed? Oh, long. L-O-N-G. Long. Long. Right. Everyone long. Long. All right. That's U.S. general American again. Once more, long. Long. Strong. Strong. Wrong. Wrong. Etc. Mm, all right, so now we're going to play around with the continuum of voice onset times. Go on. You will find that you can make, make it last long, longer. La. Look at my mouth. Long. La. La. Yeah. Longer. Just tie you. La. 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 Yeah. During. But then during the or g. All right, so let's produce fully voiced stops. We don't even need a vowel, just b. Now make it as long as you possibly can, and then go on to d and g, and we're going to compare them. So first of all, b as long as you can make it. B. All right for d. D. Now g. G. Now, I want you to just try it on your own a few times. Do each of them, one at a time, in a row. And compare the length that you can hold that pre-voicing. So, we can make it pretty long, because there's more space available for b, because b is produced way at the front. But g is at the back, so you have very little space to work with. You're going to run out of breath. So, try each one in a row, okay? Each of them separately in, in a row, go. B, d, g. Do it a few times because then you'll feel that there really is a difference. Okay? So you can feel that with g, you just don't have that much space to work with. It has to be a little shorter. Go on. Because in b, there is a fairly large space above the glottis. 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 Uh -huh. Air from the lungs can flow through the glottis for a longer, for a longer right. period of time before the pressure. Longer period of time? Longer period of time. Why do we say it that way? It's not finished. We're not finished, right? And. The next word is a uh, right. It's a preposition, and in addition, of is also a preposition. <coughs> However, of is often a li. Why? We often don't have to pause after of, because they often link two things that are very closely related together. So, period of time, 
of often links things that are so closely related that you don't want to stop after of. Sometimes you do, but usually not, or very often not. So you kind of have to analyze ahead. A fairly large period of time before. Period of time, tonic, before. Huh? Period of time before the pressure above the glottis begins to approach that of the, the air in the lungs. Very good. Lungs. Lungs. L loud, a little more open. Lungs. 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 There we go. Good. And the other one is um, begins. Begins. It, you have a little e there. It's not begins. It's be I, I, begins. 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 There we go. Everyone? It's a short i. Home is an n. The n is the n guy, the ing. Begins. Because in Taiwan English, it often is begin, begin. Can you hear the difference? Listen carefully. Begin, begin, begin. 后面的才是正确的 Begin. Begin. Not gin. Begin. begin. There we go. Yep. But in g, there is only a small space above the glottis into, into which air can flow. So the voicing. Did you read the vocal folds can be kept? Oh, sorry. The vocal folds can be kept vi vibrating Good. throughout this period. Good. But in G, there is only a small space above the glottis. Above. You the uh, the uh, the mouth is just a little You're saying uh, we want uh. Above. Yeah. Okay. So you have to open your mouth wider. Your tongue will go to lower then, and then it'll be right. Above. Above the glottis. Into which air can flow? Mm -hmm. Which, not which, which. Which. It's the same problem as begin. Which. Yeah, that's good. Which. Yep. Which air can flow, so the voicing can be maintained only briefly. Okay, maintain is pretty good. I'm being really picky today. You're really quite good, but I'm doing some way to help. Maintained. Maintained. Main. A. Main. 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 There we go. It's going to be hard to make that habit. Saying it correctly is already an effort, but because it's such an effort, it's hard to make it habit. Because maintained is such a such a such a deeply ingrained habit. So everybody, listen carefully. Use the echo this time. Let me say it. You let it echo, and then repeat. Maintained. Go. Maintained. Not very good. Listen again. Make it a really exaggerated A. I'm exaggerating it even more than we really do it, just a bit so you get it. And then I'll go back to normal. Maintained. Go. Maintained. Mm -mm -mm. You're going meh. Meh 就不对了。Meh 就不对了。It's A. A. 就是非常的非那个 A E 加一个 E 一二三的 E。A A 非常的非加个 e, A E everyone in Chinese A E, yes it's that sound it's not a、eh, it's A E A E all right try it again with the echo maintained go maintained it's good this time it's good but make it a little more A. 以以防止你以后那个再回回到那个哎那个地方去 ，a exaggerated just a bit more, and you're more likely to keep it. I think. Main. Look at my mouth when I say it. Maintained. Go. Maintained. Now it's getting right. Put it down because most of you get that wrong. Most of you, just like change, it's the same lesson that drives Amy nuts. Okay. Change maintained. It's the same lesson, but you need to apply it globally. It's not just those two words. Everywhere you see a plus a nasal, 后面不管是 m 还是 n， 都要注意那个 a. Also, a 后面会不会有 n? A lot of you put it in your notes. If you haven't, you have to go back to the 是的最新的文章 A 后面可以接 n 吗 ？n 吗？可以吗？ No, remember that ng has a limited dis distribution. What's another place we don't find ng? At the beginning of a word or a syllable, 
And we also do not find it not only after A, it doesn't come after A, but it also does not come after what? Diphthongs in general. If you have a diphthong, it will never have an ung after it, as far as I know. There are weird exceptions, but they're in weird places, so-called weird places. If you remember, there was a page last semester called Odd Syllable Types. Do you remember? Odd Syllable Types. We are talking phonotactics. There are some words that are the most strange syllables or the most strange syllables. If you didn't, if you don't remember it, review it. All right, I'm assigning that because you guys seem to have like a puzzled look on your face. We're going back now to phonetics one, and it's number 23. Phonotactics five, exceptions and odd syllable types. So please put that in your notes for next time, because I think we didn't cover it well enough last semester. Phonetics one, page number 20, um, 23, it's page 23, phonotactics five, exceptions and odd syllable types. One of the frequent exceptions to the usual phonotactic rules is names, Ren Ming. <laughs> so there's a very famous psychologist with this name. Okay. In Chinese, it's no problem. We have Liang. That's not an A sound. But this person is AI. I guess it's lame. I don't know. It always confuses me when I see it because it breaks my phonotactics rule. No ng after what? After diphthongs. We can't have ng after diphthongs, but this guy seems to have done it. But it's a name. Ren Ming, Ni Sheng Zi. Things like that will often break the rules. I still don't know exactly how he pronounces it because if your native language does not allow something, usually we will change it to something that our language does allow. Remember when we talked about the Vietnamese name last semester? <coughs> Remember that? We talked about this last semester. We can't have ng at the beginning of a word, so we tend to say nguyen, nguyen, because we can't make the sound, so we do something else. Or for psychology, They really do say the P in Greek. There's a letter P in Greek. In Greek, 有一个单独的一个符号，就是这个。That's P. Just like we have X in English, X has got the sound of two consonants, k s k s. But Greek has another one. It's not K S. It's P S. And that's why you find a lot of these words in English with P S. But does English allow P.S. at the beginning of a syllable? Breaks our phonotactic rules, so we just ignore it. We say psychology. But in German, they're a little more careful about these things. So in German, the word for psychology, anybody know? Not push, it's psychologie. Anyway, Y in German is U. Psychologie. Psychologie. They pronounce it. So in German, you will actually pronounce it. There's a similar example for a less exotic kind of word. How do we say this in English? Knee. Knee. Right. What's that K doing there? We ignore it. It used to be pronounced. And the German word for knee is? How do they say it? Knee. They keep it. We have the same. We come from the same original language, not we. Our languages go back to the same, the same original language. So Proto-Germanic, we had a kna sound that was actually pronounced. The k got dropped later in English, but the Germans kept it. So they say kni, we say ni. We say psychology, they say psychologie. They can allow it, especially for foreign words, they actually say it. <coughs> okay. So the point is, for wai lai yu, that's another one to add. For Wai Lai Yu, sometimes we make exceptions. For Ni Sheng Zi, for Ren Ming, we will sometimes break the rules of phonotactics. Another example of a Wai Lai Yu that breaks our rules in English, who is this? How do we say the name? Right, and you're saying it correctly because this is a H sound. It's a voiceless velar fricative. Do we have the H sound in English? No. Why do we put it here? Because it's a foreign name, and it's a very well-known foreign name and widely respected. So 
We respect him so much that we actually pronounce that weird sound we don't have. We make an extra effort in this case. So, Bach, because it's a foreign name, and uh, this as well, and this again is a renming. That's why if he pronounces that way, I still don't know exactly how he says it, it would be laying, but I'm not sure. In any case, after, after Shuamu Yin, there is no Ngo sound. Um, uh, let's go back to what we were doing here. Local folds can be kept, but in general, the only small. Okay, let's go on. Maintained, ah, maintained, that it came up because I said, A, ho man, can be jiang ne, bu ke yi. So you just have to pay attention. A or other shamu yin plus nasal, you have to make an extra effort because in Taiwan, you'll probably simplify the, <coughs> the diphthong into a monophthong. You say maintained, right? Make it a full diphthong. Maintained, maintained. We can also put an M after A, for example, maim, that just is Shanghai. These, to maim somebody means to injure them, so they become somehow, um, for example, for example, they lose an arm or something, they've been maimed. So maim, maim, everyone maim. 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 Maintained. Maintained. The Maintained. Maintained. Some of you, by the second one, you're saying, ah, main yijin jiao de hen qing su, di er ge sui bian yi dian. Bu shi, liang ge dou zi a, once more. Do them really carefully and really deliberately. Maintained. Maintained. Good. Amy, can you do it for us? Maintained. All right. She doesn't look like she's putting a lot of effort into it, right? She's just saying it very naturally. It doesn't take a lot of funny effort. It's just normal. So you have to practice it until it feels natural to you. Right now, it's a big effort. It doesn't feel very natural. Is that right? Is that right? Mm -hmm. So you have to keep practicing it until it feels natural. And when it feels natural to you, it usually sounds natural to us. OK, go. Languages often fail to have. Often, yeah. Often mm -hmm. fail to have fully voiced velo stops. OK. Let's think about that one. Languages often fail to have fully voiced velar stops. And the reason again? Miranda? There's not much space. Now he says that. And that may be a general tendency. You'd have to, you'd have to survey lots and lots of languages to make a statement like this. And then and Professor Latifel could work with hundreds and possibly thousands, but definitely hundreds and hundreds of languages. However, how do you say t in Minayu? T. You, right? That's a fully voiced G. That's a fully voiced G. You, right? That's a fully voiced G. How about you? Do you have that? I don't know how to pronounce it. Ah, who's Minayu is pretty good. Who's Minayu is pretty good. <laughs> Ah, oh, is he sick or? Ah, oh, dear. Nobody else? Say to me, I'm going to say to you. Huh? You. Louder. That's really unusual. That's really unusual. It was what I was talking about. You're in the middle of the world. Do you speak Minayu at home? Uh, I speak Minayu at my grandmother's house. So not so often. Yeah. Yeah. Frankly, you're less reliable. You're less reliable. I learned it. I learned mine from a Kuban with Lu Yin Dai. But at least the Lu Yin Dai are very reliable. They're very, very good. It's you. You. It's a fully voiced G. So I think I'm the most reliable one right now. And that's really terrible. <laughs> All right, the rest of you, find somebody who's Minani is really good. And you listen to it yourself. Okay. It's you. So we do have it in Minayu. Mm. Oh, let's go on. Note that Thai does not have a voice stop. Mm? Voice. Mm? Make it shorter. Voice. Yeah. Voice stop contrasting with a voiceless, unaspirated Not stop. Un. Un. Yeah. Unaspirated Good. stop. 
at this place of articulation. All right, so that's Thai. I think we'll go back to Thai after we finish this section. We've got some files that we can listen to, okay? And take the last two paragraphs of this section, please. <clears throat> when, you, when you can produce fully voice stops satisfactorily, try saying voiceless unaspirated, you may find it easiest to start with words like spy, sty, sky. Say these words very slowly. Now say words like them. Hmm? But say, but now say words like them. Mm -mm. Um, now say words like them, but nope, without no, Nope, 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 nope. Okay. Amy is almost native-like in her English, but there are a few little things that I still catch you on now and then, and they're worth paying attention to. What do we stress in this sentence? If you use analysis, you can get it. Say. Nope. No. No. Look, OK, what is our principle when we want to figure out what to stress? We've got three rules, right? Let's go over the three rules, and then let's apply them in order and see which applies he here. The first rule is what? Stress the? Content words don't stress the function words. That's rule number one. Rule number one applies to what? The first sentence on a new topic. The first sentence on a new topic, we apply rule one. After the first sentence, we're often going to have to look at rules two and three. So rule one mainly applies to the first sentence on a new topic. Now, I mentioned that last semester, and it's in the Shida Wenjang. But very often when you read something, you don't realize its import. You don't realize how important it is until something comes up that's frustrating you. And finally, ah, this can help solve your problem. Oh, I better write that down. That's what happens. But that's OK. That's the way learning goes. What that should tell you is when you're reading and you think it's a bunch of dry facts that really are not that big a deal, they're not very important, realize that in some context, they will turn out to be very important. So even if you don't feel right now what's so important about it, someday you'll go, ah, that's it. Do you see what I'm saying? So, 当时那个像诗的那些文章里面，你看那些东西，哇，蛮枯燥一大堆的那个规则什么的。When you need it, you will find it's really, it's really man man you zhen han li It's really important. Mm, so, rule number one is stress the content words. Don't stress the function words. Rule number two is. Uh, that's rule number three. It doesn't have to be rule number three, but we've put it there. Yeah. Right, stress new information, de-stress old information. Take the stress off of old information. Put the stress on new information. And it's related to rule number three, which is now, go ahead. Contrast. Contrast. If you have contrasting elements, stress the contrasting elements and take the stress off everything else. Make it deeping, diao. Those three rules will get you through most of your intonation questions. Stress content words, don't stress function words, number one. Two. Stress new information, de-stress, D-E-S-T-R-E-S-S, D-E-S-T-R-E-S-S, -S, because -E -S -S, a lot of you say distress. What's the distress? D-I-S, Jopudela. Take the stress off of old information. The third rule is, the stress syllable of the two elements in comparison or contrast is stressed. Everything else becomes deeping diao. Deeping diao is the way we unstress something or de stress something. You should know that. Deeping diao is de stressing is something. That's really important. That means a low, even tone. All right, so let's apply those rules. Is this the first statement on a new topic? No, it's not. So we can sort of jump from rule one to two and three. Now, you're saying maybe it's say. Why is it not say? We already said say. It can't be words either, right? Mm -hmm. No. Now we'll get some stress. That's also new. Now say, that's true. But we have another one that we need to stress. There's a hint in the first word of the next clause. That's not the first word of the next clause. 
but. But tells you what? Like. You got the answer, but what information does but give you? We have a contrast. This analysis, although it takes time, it will give you a lot of insight. And it will slowly become natural. That's what it should do. So in the future, when you see something like but, that will set off, ah, this is a contrast, so I better stress the contrasting element. Because there's a contrast, we stress, like you just said, we stress what? Like, because it's, it contrasts with what? Sylvie? Right, so words, say these words, these words. Now say, not these words, but words like these words. It's actually contrasting with these words. So we're not going to say these words again. Okay, we're not going to say these words again, I should say. We're not going to say these words again. We're going to say words that are like these words. Everybody got it? Okay, I know I took a lot of time, but I want you to understand this thoroughly because this is good and digu in English. You must do this. You do it in Chinese too, but you're not so aware of it. Okay? You're not so aware of it in Chinese. When you're jia chang yu qi, you do it in Chinese. Mm, because I mm, <laughs> you could say. When you're jia chang yu qi, you will do it in Chinese. You don't do it in all the places we do it in English. But when you intensify, you do it in Chinese. So mm, try to have your, like, make yourself alert to these little marks or signals. Let's go ahead. Now say words like them, but without the initial S. OK. Now this is something that you are good at. You should capitalize on what you're good at. You're very good at tones because you've got tones in Mandarin. Your ears are sensitive to them. You grab onto them right away. You're very good at them. You're also fine at producing initial voiceless unaspirated stops because you have them in Mandarin. Now, it doesn't guarantee just because you have it in your native language, you do it well in another language because sometimes you don't transfer well. For example, name and maintain. You have a lot of trouble with that. But you have A in Chinese, no problem. If you just say A in Chinese and say, mm, A, fei chang fei, A, mm, it's perfect. But it doesn't transfer well because. Once I tell you, once I point it out to you, and then you push yourself, you force yourself, you can do it fine. But why does it not transfer well? Why is something you have in Chinese that's almost exactly like English? Otherwise, it's the same. Why is something that you have in Mandarin so pronounced so incorrectly so often by Taiwanese? Almost everybody says menten. What's your nam? Change. Almost everybody says that. Even though you have A in Mandarin, a perfectly good A, what's the problem? Why is it not transferring well? There's a very good reason. I think it's because we don't have a nasal posture in Chinese. Phonotactically, you can explain it that way. That's true. However, if you just pretend there's no nasal there, and you just say the A and then say mm, there's no problem. There's a bigger problem here. It's true. Phonotactically, you don't have that. That's one reason. But I think there's another reason. You're going to go, oh, when I tell you, tell you what I'm habit. thinking. Huh? Habit. habit, and where does the habit come from? from the spelling AI is very clearly A. If you learn Pindu Fa, if you learn Suran Fa, Fa. A, A, I is often A, like wait. How do you say, how do you say dung in English? Fine. No one here. 你们也没有 eight in Chinese, but you do fine. 中文也没有 eight, right? So you've got, you're on the right track, but where did the habit come from? Excuse me, all you teachers who are watching this video. It's faulty teaching. It's a faulty model, a faulty example. Incorrect example. That's it, my conclusion. If your teacher insisted when you're first learning language, what's your name? Do you think you would have learned it right away? The problem is that actually you learned 
your teacher's pronunciation so well. It's not that you learn poorly. The problem is not that you learn poorly. The problem is you've got a poor model. And you learn the poor model very well. This is my conclusion. Okay, if you want to argue with it, and teachers, if you want to protest, that's fine. <laughs> you've got an incorrect model, and that's true of most of the problems in Taiwan English. You've got an incorrect model, because if you've got the right model in the first place, young people learning a language with just a little pushing, if you just make them aware of what they have to watch out for, even after puberty, it doesn't matter. You will still get it. Your ears are fine. Your brains are fine. You learn it very well now. You could have learned it then, right? The problem is faulty teaching, faulty models. And once you have that faulty model, you learn it, becomes a habit, then you don't really hear it anymore. And even if you get a good model, you kind of ignore the good model because you've got your own established model. And those of you who do jia jiao, even if you try to change the pronunciation of a student who's just started English, and you say that we don't say nim, we don't say nam, we say name. But if his teacher and all his classmates say nim, tell me what happens. And then? And they will say, because everybody else in the class says it that way. And then if this student, finally you succeed in changing it to name, he goes back to class and he says, name, what's going to happen? People, think he's wrong. People will laugh. The teacher, I don't know what the teacher will say. But the students, the classmates will say, that's really weird. Because a lot of students, when I said kush, I meant cuz. Cuz became kush in Chinese. <laughs> because a lot of my students, are, they do jia jiao, and they've told me the same story over and over and over again. And they get really tired of it because they can't fight against the, they can't fight against the current, you know, this powerful current of what's coming, the information coming from their source of authority. So basically the problem is teaching. In, in my many years of trying to figure out the main problems of Taiwan English, it's not the worst English in the world, but there's one, you know, a couple major problems, the two big problems. You know, one is that it's not listening-based. You learn mostly from a written text. You do not get many good examples of spoken native-like English. So you rely on something coming in through the eyes and you manufacture the pronunciation in your head. What pronunciation do you use? The incorrect one you got from your teacher. So it's basically not listening-based. That's the big problem. Because it's not listening-based, things do not get automated. You don't have the echoes in your head to automate so that you just pop out with what you learned because you've heard it many times. The second one is that the teachers have it wrong. The teachers have very faulty pronunciation. Those are the two things. The first one is the biggest problem because a teacher with weak pronunciation can give you lots of opportunities to listen. Even if they don't know about the echo method, they can have you listen and repeat. That will do it too. Echo method is more efficient, it's better. But even just doing a lot of listening and repeating, you will eventually get it. But you don't do that in Taiwan so far. Some Shaosuda teachers probably do, but Doshuda teachers may. So, because you don't have that habit of listening, even if you had a poor teacher, if you had a lot of good models and you're in the habit of listening, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be misled by the teacher's poor pronunciation. I think I told you the story of a teacher in East Europe, someplace like the Czech Republic, who suddenly had to start teaching English instead of Russian. Her Russian was good, but her English was not good. She suddenly had to start teaching English because they wanted to get rid of Russian influence and they wanted everybody to learn English. So they got rid of Russian, they made English into a required class. She said to the students, my English is not very good, but I'm going to play tapes of good English for you. This is how you should learn. You play the tape, you practice, you repeat. Her English was not that good, but she did a very good job of teaching English. So the teacher having poor English is not a fatal problem. It doesn't mean that the students won't learn well. If the teacher teaches in the right way, they will say, in fact, my model is not very good. I want you to use the recording. They can overcome their own weakness that way. 
Do you all understand what I'm saying? So it's not as though the teacher has to be God. I mean, no teacher is God. And they have to do everything perfectly. They will have their weaknesses. But if they use recordings and they teach listening, everything in the end comes back to listening. And getting in the habit of listening, keeping those echoes of listening in your head, you'll get it, okay? So anyway, the problem is a poor model and then not teaching listening, maintain. All right, the things you can do well, this is where we started out. You are very good at tones. You are very good at initial voiceless, unaspirated stops like ban and ban and dan and gan. All of those are initial voiceless, unaspirated stops. You can do that naturally. Um, so, and you're also very good at creak. Whoa, whoa. Those are three things you naturally do, and those are carrying over. As soon as we point them out, then you do them fine. You can also now transfer a because now you know how to do it. You can transfer that, but it'll take work because there was interference in your natural transference. But once your ears are attuned, and once you have the confidence of, I can do some things in phonetics exceptionally well, then you have the confidence, I can do the other things just as well if I try. Right? Some things you do already because you're good at them in your native language and you're transferred. Other things you practice, you will also get tao ji hao at them. You can have that same confidence that you have with things like, things like the creek. Okay? Do you see what I'm saying? You bring that confidence. You know you can do them perfectly, absolutely perfectly. You're a great example. You can have that same confidence with other things. Just work at it a bit. Understand. Cognition is first. You should then you get your confidence. Get good feedback. Feedback is another part. So cognition, right? You understand? Two, practice. Three, feedback. Those three steps, then you'll get it. When you have a qualified person giving you feedback, you can tell right away how good you are. So if somebody, just watch me right now. I'll use an example. If somebody says begin, am I going to react at all? When is it time to begin? Am I going to react at all? No, because, Mindy? <laughs> it's correct. If you're too good, I'm not going to react at all. And sometimes a student will finish a sentence and they'll look at me questioningly. I go, what's wrong? They're asking me, did I do it right? It was so right, it didn't occur to me that there was anything to correct. So the best kind of feedback you can get is no reaction at all. Nobody noticed anything different. Nobody, nobody noticed anything unusual. And you can see that on me. You can, if you observe my reactions to your reading, and I'm really picky, right? When I react, not at all. Either I'm thinking about something else, I'm dreaming. You know, I'm, I'm worried about the next thing I'm going to say. Or more normally, because usually I am paying attention. It's so perfect, there's nothing that I can react to. You see no tension in my face at all, right? So, absolutely no feedback. It means, what are you asking me about? It's so good. All right, if you say, um, when is it time to begin? Then I'm going to react. I'll say, Gregorida. If I'm not a, if I weren't a pronunciation teacher, when is it time to begin? I'll just, you have to watch me when I tell you this. If it's just a regular native speaker, when is it time to begin? I might just do that. That's all. I'm just going to tell me to isha. That's all. Begin. Oh, begin. I'm not going to tell you anything. I'll just have a reaction like that. All right. In class, and I'm correcting, and then maybe Annie says, when is it time to begin? Oh, that's pretty good. What does that tell you? That means it's better than before, but not quite. What's the, what's the first clue you got that something wasn't quite right? So she says, when is it time to begin? Oh, that's better. I gave you two big clues. Right? I, I kind of, you know, um, knitted my brow a bit. And the other thing was, how quick was my reaction? There was a pause there, right? There was a delay. That's when I was thinking, is that right or is that wrong? Was I shy? Was I truly? So it's time to begin. Oh, that's better. My two clues are delay. 
if there's a delay in the reaction, that means something's not quite right, but I can't tell you what it is. 我搞不清楚是哪里不对，就是有点不对。So when you hear a delay, that's feedback. It's telling you not quite right yet. And then second is the lack of enthusiasm in my voice, right? Oh, that's look at my face. Oh, that's better. How does that make you feel? I didn't get the prize, right? <laughs> This time I didn't get the prize. And the third thing is my words. It's better. That means be chen hao. It doesn't mean it's correct. Okay. So all those things can give you a yi ju. They give you a basis on which to get your production closer to the target, right? So then she said begin. I said an. It's not yi. It's i. And then she says it's time to begin. Yes. How about the reaction time? Reaction time. It was very fast. That means I did not have to process it. My brain said that's the way we say it, and it's I won't give no reaction. It won't be. 我这次不是没有反应的情况，是因为我们已经针对这个字，我要给你一个反应。So in this time, no reaction is not what we're looking for. We need ah yeah, and you will feel immediately. Now I have achieved it. All right. So those three steps. You have to understand it. Two, you have to practice it. Develop the echo, and three, get feedback. The feedback will tell you if you've got it or not. So you need feedback from a qualified person, from someone who is able to tell you the truth, who is good enough to tell you if it really is right or not. If it's somebody who doesn't care or not qualified, then their their feedback is not going to be very good, not very useful. Okay, so my point was, you're good at a few things. You're extremely good. You're As good as anybody needs to be, you can work up to that level with other things if you work on them. Get the feedback, and, and then keep doing your way tell until it's perfect. So let's just practice bye, die, and guy with no voicing and no aspiration. Go bye, die, guy. Everyone. Bye, die, guy. Absolutely perfect. You get my fin on this. Everybody gets my fin. You're very good at that. Let's do them with full voicing. Bye, die, guy. Bye, die, guy. You're perfect at that too. You don't have that in Mandarin, but you do it beautifully. All right, so you're good at that. Let's put them at the end of a word. Let me think of three words that we can use. Let's see if this works. Yeah, it works. It works very good, very good. Because very often, if we pick the same initial and vowel, it doesn't form a word. But these are all words. Tab is a 标签 Tad means 一点点 It's just a tad off. It could be a tad better, 一点点 Tag 也是一种标签 Okay. So I want you to put full voicing on that final voice stop. Listen. Tab, tad. Tag. Remember, the vowel is going to change for the third one. We have velar raising. Once more, listen, and I want you to try it. Tab, tad, tag. You try it. Tab, tag, tag. All right. This is harder for native speakers of Mandarin. The one, the way to help you improve it is just put a schwa after it. And lengthen the stop, and then eventually we'll take off the schwa, because this is something Taiwanese really have a problem with. Because again, it's due to faulty teaching. Of course, it has to do with your native language. But my observation in Taiwan students is these are usually homophones. Tap and tap, they're the same. Right? Is that right? Did it ever bother you that they sound the same, or did you figure that that p can be u so way? Somebody, those of you who did not use to distinguish between these two. One problem was the final voicing. Another problem is you didn't lengthen the vowel. So in Taiwan English, these two are usually homophones, right? And just like tat, tat is 一种编织的艺术 Tat is 现在不流行了，老太太会做 tat. And tad, and then tack, tudi, and tag. You should put these in your notes. I want you to practice these to make sure that you can distinguish them clearly. You both need a lengthened vowel, and you need a fully voiced final. 
We don't always fully voice the final, but you should be able to. And when you don't fully voice the final, often you don't voice it at all, and then tab sounds like tap, and then it's wrong. So the first thing is lengthen the vowel. That's the most basic thing we need to do. You have to lengthen the vowel. Otherwise, we really have trouble. And then practice voicing the B. Now, usually we only voice it halfway through, and then we let go of the voicing, and we stop voicing. But you should be able to produce a fully voiced final B, and that's difficult. The initials, you're very good. You have no problem. You're okay. So, if you're having trouble producing that final voiceless B, and you've already remembered to lengthen the vowel, let's try putting a schwa after it at first. Listen. Tab. Go. All right, don't be, don't be, don't be, voicing, there's voicing that should go all the way through to this schwa, okay? Listen, and I want you to keep the voicing going, don't break it off, listen. Tab. All right, no break at all, there's no break at all. B is a stop, but even when our lips are together, there's an occlusion. The voicing continues down here, so the sound does not stop at any point. And I'll get the microphone just to make sure you're hearing the whole thing clearly. <clears throat> tab, tab, tab. That's what I want you to do. Tab. Is this on? Yes. Okay. Do it again. Okay, sing it without John Duan. Tab. All right, do you get it? So practice that until you can do it well. Then pretend you're going to say it again, but pin zi That's why I hope I never hurt you, Diao. Tab. Tab. Turn it off. That got a million in July. And then you've got a final fully voiced B. Try it. Tab. All right. Now take off the u. Uh. Tab. Go. Tab. There we go. All right. Practice that. All of you practice that, because this is a really big issue in Taiwan English. Most Taiwanese cannot pronounce a final voice stop. They don't. They can't. They don't. It's not that they can't. They could if they were taught. But in school, your teachers, they produce it incorrectly. So tap, tab, become tap, tap for you. Bat, bad, become bat, bat. Let's try the next one. Tat, tad. Try. And don't make it an n, because Taiwanese often get confused. They think it's an n there. Tad, busit. Don't let any air out of your nose. It's not a nasal. Tad, tad. Try it with the uh first. Tad, tad. All right, take off the uh. Tad. It sounds like you're about to throw up. Okay, tad, tad. No N. I'm hearing some N's out there. No N's. No air comes out through your nose. Tad. Again. Tad. Tad. You guys need to practice this. Write it down. Practice. I'll ask you again next class. Uh, let's do the last one. Tack. Tack. Tag. 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 Don't stop the voicing any time, at any time. Tag. Tag. All right. Tag. Tag. Okay, you're getting the idea, but it's not a nasal. Remember, it is not a nasal. All right, final voice stops. Let's just finish. <clears throat> All right, so we don't have any trouble with those. Spy, sty, sky. Everybody, spy, sty, sky. Spy, sty, sky. Uh-huh. Bye, die, guy. Bye, die, guy. Pie, tie, kai. Pie, tie, kai. 
Buy, die, guy. Buy, die, guy. Okay, you're very good at all of those. This is no problem. Let's go on. You will have less difficulty making aspirated stops. Making aspirated stops. Making aspirated stops because they occur in most forms of English, in words such as pie and tie. In words such as. In words in in words such as pie and tie. But do try pronouncing all of the Thai and Hindi words in Table Six Point Six and Six Point Seven. Okay, um, we haven't done those. I think we'll do those after break, and then have your exercises out and ready to check. We'll do that after we finish the chapter. Okay, take a break. We're going to continue now. Now we have a new auditor this semester who I didn't formally introduce, and I will let him introduce himself. And he wrote to me and said that. You're not studying in England. Uh, no, uh, going to study. Going to study. Okay, but we have an issue of pronunciation. People weren't really confident of you. Could you improve your pronunciation further? They're worried that you wouldn't be able to deal with English speaking all the time because of pronunciation issues. So that's why he decided to come here and he found this stuff interesting and stayed. And I said, well, I wanted you to put out your theories about how we can improve pronunciation. How we can. Actually, reach people. Remember, I asked you to please put that in your notes, and he wrote an essay on it, and I found it very interesting. And I would just like him to share it with you, as somebody who is now really motivated to work on his pronunciation, what he thinks of the problem from his perspective. Okay? Can you just read it? Read one paragraph, and then I'll probably make comments, and then you go on to the next. Okay. 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 Hello, everybody. My name is E House, and you get home, Peter. I'm interested in this class because I want to improve my pronunciation, and also I was inspired by the last lecture that the professor told us to write a, uh, the notes about how to spread the correct pronunciation to the public. And according to my experience, I find it very useful and very urgent to uh, improve the, the pronunciation of the, these uh, elementary school students. So I write an essay. Firstly, I found it is very imperative to target at the primary education because the earlier the student learn the correct pronunciation, the fewer mistakes they will make after they grow up. But unfortunately, many instructors in Taiwan still uh, instill these pupils a wrong wrong pronunciations, and I. During the times I work as a, a volunteer, as a tutor in a local organization, I found out that peer pressure plays a very important role in in students' learn English journeys. For example, the children will speak the the right pronunciation. However, they will face the the teeth or <laughs> the from their peers because because they speak the wrong pronunciation, which was taught by their teacher. I think that it's very important to make some change. So uh, in these uh, organizations, I want to correct their pronunciation. So I and then I came out with the idea if we can hire a group of uh, tutor and make them to uh, equip them with the good knowledge about the pronunciation. I think uh, the situation will become better. So if we can cooperate with the government. Hopefully, so maybe we can make some change about uh, this uh, bad situation. Yes, this is my. Okay. That was everything you had in there. And then for your own interest, how you ended up here, how did that happen? Okay. Then, how did you find out about this? Uh, yes. Then, uh, how did you? How to say that? See, you didn't attend a lecture. Somebody gave you links to the articles, the Shuda articles. Is that right? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. okay. The next paragraph I want to argue that is, okay. I shared the uh, professor uh, Chong's uh, uh, article to my to my friend. But another interesting is that the uh, most of the friends uh, accept uh, her advice, but it's when the one who can speak the uh, English very fluent fluently, because they 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 don't think they have the need to change their pronunciation because they can speak uh, the. The English very fluently, so they are resistant to make some change. Did they tell you that? Uh, no, but because of their reaction. By the reaction, yeah, they yeah, thought. Yes, yeah, they so I don't need this. I don't need this. Yeah, yes. Good. Yes. Okay. okay. Those are all my okay. comments. Thank That's you very it. Much. Thank you. I'll keep that for a while. Thank you.
Okay, those were really interesting comments, and they're what I have observed as well. <clears throat> Sometimes we get students who are already very fluent in English. They speak really quickly and really incorrectly. And they're really, really hard to correct because they can communicate, and they have a lot of foreign friends, and they're very confident. And if you want to slow them down and correct them, they get really irritated at you. They thought, well, I'm just talking, well, why are you correcting me? And I've been speaking English, I, look at all my foreign friends, you know? <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> I've seen this too many times. And those people really do, will tend, do tend to resist. And sometimes their pronunciations are really weak. They're really poor. But because they have now ingrained them so much, and they've used the echo method to get the wrong pronunciation in their head so deeply, you know, the echoes are telling them all the wrong things, the wrong kinds of echoes. So it is really harder to get people like that to change. And I have that feeling firsthand sometimes. I mean, I speak Chinese pretty fluently myself. It's not always perfect or correct. Um, but usually I'm just trying to communicate what I'm saying. And if, or, he will correct my Chinese. I'll go, that's my reaction too. So I understand this reaction perfectly because it's human. We get defensive and we think, that's my feeling. So I think, you know, why do you bother me? But then I go, oh, I've been doing it wrong all these years. I'd better fix that. That's what I do. And sometimes a student will point out something maybe I've been doing for years that I wasn't paying attention to. At the time I think, hey, and then I will start observing, and then sometimes I will make changes. This has happened a few times. It usually comes from a TA or from Xi Yonghui Lao He's the one who's very, very kind and Han Kang Kai. Mm. My point in saying that is I understand well this reaction. When, when you want to correct them, they think, I'm just talking to you. What are you bugging me about? But at least in this class, I have a justification because I teach. In addition to phonetics, Dai Yi Ying Wen and Ying Ting. And Ying Ting is all about listening and pronunciation. So those are classes that are specifically meant, designed, to help people improve their pronunciation. In those classes, once they get over the initial shock of the first class, after which some people cry. I have had students cry after class. They just cry. Not many. Um, um, but occasionally it happens. It happened once in class recently when a student prepared and then still made a lot of the same mistakes. And then I corrected each one and I said, I think you need to prepare more. And then she cried later. She said, I worked really hard. I really tried. And I thought, yes, but you know, there's still some things you have to watch out for. <laughs> so we've got this inbuilt, it's very, very the defense mechanism. First of all, we don't really care. We just want people to understand us. And number two, we want to protect ourselves. We think we're doing okay. You know, how dare you tell me I'm not doing okay? And then you also talked about peer pressure, and other people will laugh at you for doing it right because so many people are doing it wrong. Okay, this makes me think of Chu Yuan. Chu Yuan says the whole world is drunk. I'm the only one who's not drunk. So I say, well, why don't you get drunk too? I think that's a very you know, Chu Yuan is pretty popular here in Taiwan, isn't he? Okay, but the attitude, you know, is, you know, if everybody's doing it wrong, why are you going to do it right? In the context of Taiwan, it's okay. If everybody's saying Chen, you should say Chen too if you want to speak Taiwan English. But as soon as you leave Taiwan, it's different, right? You've got a different set of peers. Mm. So these are all issues we really need to think about. And the incorrect models. So uh, Yi Hao was talking about especially at the elementary level. Catch them young. When they're young, if you give it to them correct the, same, the first time, they will do it perfectly. They will do it fine. Because at the very, very beginning, myself and a lot of other foreign teachers, I think, we wondered if Taiwanese are just not good at pronunciation, just not good at getting sounds. It's not the problem. It's not it. Your ears are great. Your brains are great. Your motivation is there. What's missing? You got a bad model and it became habit. That's it and you didn't practice listening. So start early, give them lots of listening, give them good models. Teachers, if your English is not that strong, use recordings, teach listening, you can overcome it. So this is really good. Um, so you think that 
getting articles and books out there and making people aware of the problem will help. Because a lot of people are just not aware of the problem, right? You think? Yeah, so if the, if the problem is pointed out to them, then a lot of people are really willing to do something. Because you don't want to, if you know that there's something wrong with the way you're dressed, right? You want somebody to tell you, if your zipper's open, right? You want somebody to tell you, you don't want to go out there with your zipper open. Um, so if you know there's a problem, you want it pointed out and you want to fix it, I think, in general. It just needs to be done. All right, anybody have any feedback or comments before we continue? I think that was kind of an interesting contribution and useful contribution to the class. And thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we're going on to a, a summary of the actions of the Gladys, but they were talking about the Hindi and the Thai stops. So let's listen to those before we continue. Let's practice with those. We're not so, we don't have big problems with initial stops so much, except for implosives are probably still a problem. But in general, initial stops are not so difficult. So let's go to the Thai um, stops. And that's on page 154 at the bottom. There's only six items here. So let's listen to the fully voiced bilabial initial stop. Here. Ba. Everyone? Ba. 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 Good. Let's contrast it with voiceless unaspirated. Ba. 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 If you didn't have this training, you would all think that's B, right? Because it's like an English boy, oh boy, and it's like a Mandarin, ban. All right, let's listen to the voiceless aspirated. Pa. 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 What vowel is that? It's an A. What kind of A? Hat or no hat? With a hat, right? It's an A with a hat. So it's ah, ah, an chan ah, bu zi ang zang ang. Let's do all three of them again. Ba. 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 Listen carefully and repeat. Ba. Everybody repeat after you listen. Ba. 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 All right. Ba. 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 Ah. And the last one. <clears throat> ta. 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 Okay. Let's listen to the dental. All right. Da. da. Got a different tone here. Da. 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 Too much ah. Da. 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 Okay. Voiceless unaspirated. Da. 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 It's quite sharp. I think a VOT. You guys are judging me. It's not like in, like in French or in some languages when we have a little like 20 millisecond um, VOT. This is. Sounds like it's near zero. Da. 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 Okay. And then the voiceless aspirated. I think that's probably the easiest. Ta. 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 Okay. That's Thai. Let's go back and let's do Hindi. Okay. Let's go through the bilabial series. And this is voiceless, unaspirated. Bal. 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 Have you found the right table? It's just on the next page, upper right hand, or upper part of the page, rather. Okay, voiceless, unaspirated. Let's do that again. Bal. 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 Okay. 
voiceless aspirated. Pal. 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 Voiceless aspirate is the easiest, isn't it? Yeah. It's a little harder, I think, for both of us for similar reasons to distinguish between fully, vo uh, fully voiced initial and zero v VOT. All right, here's the voiced initial. Bal. 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 All right, now we're going to have breathy voice. That's a wider. Now we're going to hear an uh oh sound. Bal. Bal. Uh. All right, listen. Bal. That one's very clear. Bal. It sounds like he's put an H in there. So put an H in there, keep the voicing going. Bal. Bahal. Bah. Say bah. 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 All right. Because he makes it really explicit and clear. Bahal. 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 Okay. I'm not going to go through the other ones due to time constraints. Can you please put that on your assignment list? I want you to practice these on your own, both the Thai and the Hindi. Practice these yourself. They will definitely help you. They'll help sharpen your ears and also make you better at pronouncing. Thai and Hindi, do both of these. You can get them online or on the CD that came with your book. Either one is fine. Let's finish the chapter. Next reader. Okay. Bella. Summary of actions of the goddess. The vocal folds are involved in many different kinds of actions. They are used in the production, uh, in the production of implosives and ejectives and in forming different phonation types. These two types of activities are often not clearly separable. All right, read that sentence again. Um, which one? The one uh, you just read. Uh, these two types. All right, first of all, these is very long because because S is pronounced as Z, and that makes the E even longer. E is a long vowel anyway, and the Z makes it even longer. So make sure that's really long and the Z is really clear. Uh, these two types here, these two types, go ahead. These two types. Ooh, you need more E and you need more Z, both. These two types. Mm -hmm. Uh, these two types of activities are often not clearly separable. All right, why do you say often? Uh, I heard it on CNN. Ah, it's gotten sort of popular in the States, and it's also standard in British English. My British friend always says often, but I don't say it, so we're going to use my accent as our choice. <laughs> say often. I, a lot of people are saying often. I consider it a spelling pronunciation, except for British, they just do it. Oh, but yeah, for American my English. Uh, language exchange partner, he says often. Yes. So I You're what? A language exchange. Oh, yeah. okay. And he's American. That's a good excuse. <laughs> That's a really good excuse. If you want to persist in it, you can, but I recommend for this class. Because he said it all the time, so I just... I can see. I mean, that's an extremely good reason for saying often. Most of my students don't because I've probably told them not to. Um, I think what happens is we get these ideas about how language should be based on how we, we ourselves speak. And when something new happens, just like tsulo, haolo, do you like that? Tsulo. Oh, I don't tsulo. Oh, I mean haolo. You don't, do you like that or do you mind, not mind? Annie doesn't like it. All right, when I, when I hear often, it sounds like, That's how it sounds to my ears, just to give you a comparison. Now, younger people especially are probably not going to mind it and they'll say it themselves, and they're not all young. A lot of older people say often as well. But I'm just telling you what it does to my ears. How low, you know, that's how it sounds. Um, if you want to say it, you actually have an extremely good reason for saying it. <laughs> okay, and then uh, can you read the whole sentence again? Uh, these, two, these two types of activities are often not clearly separable. Okay, if you want to insist on often, I won't, I won't correct you. And then two, it's not two, two, yeah. Not two, two, two. Everyone, two. However, that's a funny thing I may have mentioned last semester or not. <clears throat> that 
mm, we no longer distinguish between, for example, um, during and during, right? We don't say during. We don't say do. We don't distinguish between do and do, D-E-W. D-E-W, do. We don't say do. There's do on the grass. We don't say that. Most people don't. You still hear it, but not so common. Um, we say do. D-E-W is do. Do, right. D-U-R-I-N-G is during. Now, the place where we drop the y sound is before, I think I mentioned this last semester, so I may be repeating myself, but never mind. It, it seems like a lot of you find it new. Where do we usually drop the y of this rising diphthong u? We drop it a lot in American English. It's not just American English. In some kinds of British English, they also drop it. And some drop it more than we do. Where do we drop it, and where do we never drop it? Think of a bunch of words that have u in them. It's not about being an initial. <clears throat> you, it's true, we don't drop it in the initial. If it's like you or university, you're absolutely right. We don't drop it there. You're right. You're right. That's not what I had in mind, but that's a good observation. After which sounds do we often drop the y? And after which sounds do we almost never drop the y? There's a pattern. And it has to do with frequency and markedness. What kind of consonant is the most common in English? What, if you look at the consonants of English, a bunch of them go into the same group based on place of articulation. Alveolar. So alveolar is the most unmarked, I would say. It's the most unmarked articulation we have in English, place of articulation, because the most consonants have an alveolar alveolar articulation. It's the least marked. It's the most unmarked. So that means that they're probably going to be innovators, and they're going to get sloppy. They're going to do things that other consonants are not allowed to do. One example of this is T. T behaves really wildly. T, right? T is T. Put is unreleased, right? And stop, 又是另外一个发音. 然后呢, water, 又是另外一个发音, 变成D了,很短的D. And, but, 嗯,它变成一个后色音. T的变化是不是很多? All right, that has to do with T being such a 强势的一个字音. And also, 一个属于一个很强势的一个发音位置. So T is like, they're, they're like this popular person who can do whatever they want. I mean, they could take off their clothes in public, and people go, ah, oh, isn't that interesting? Anybody else say, what's wrong with you? You know, <laughs> you should go to jail. But T can do just about anything it wants. Not quite everything, but a lot. Now, that will give you a very big clue as to what I just asked. Where can Y often be dropped? In you. It's originally the diphthong you, but the you can often be dropped in American English in what environments? When it comes after an alveolar consonant, that's the answer. So it's not just D, it's not just T. It's also like tube, like guanzi. We don't say tube, we say tube. D E W, we say do, not do. But in addition to D and T, we also often emit it after, for example, in yo. L U R E. How do we say it, Amy? L U R E. Lure. Lure or lure. Both are correct. Lure or lure. We often say lure. Okay, to lure her. Lure her, lure her, do yo. So we don't say lure. It was originally you. And how about N? Baozi. You say newspaper. I say newspaper. Newspaper. Right. Sometimes I say new, especially when I want to emphasize something, I might say new. But usually I say new. That's a completely new idea. Newspaper. Poguang Yifu, nude, not nude. Unless I want to. Just a hao wan. Chao xiao. Then I might say nude. Oh, he's nude. That's a strong English chant. The guanxi. 
，我们要朝下个东西，可能会装个硬式枪，就像会装个北京枪一样。So L N T D， and how about S？ S is also alveolar， 就是打官司告人家。We don't say sue somebody， we say sue somebody。And how about do we have any other ones? Yeah, sure. 那个是从 u 影响了那个前面的子音变 sure。它本来是 sure， 很很早很久以前是 sure。Sugar 本来是 sugar。Some Taiwanese still say it that way. But now it's sugar and sure. 那个本来有 sh s 念作 sh 是因为后面本来是 u。Annie, is that new to you? You look surprised. It's new. Okay. So when you see S U and it's pronounced sh, that's because it used to be U. We don't pronounce the y, but it affected the s and turned it into a sh. We call that palatalization. 恶化，那是恶化的关系。Now, most of that has disappeared after not just stops, but after any alveolar consonant. If U comes after any alveolar consonant in American, usually the y is dropped. Sometimes there's variation. Like I still say new. I still say new sometimes, but my unmarked pronunciation I think is new. All right, but that means it is not dropped in what environments? 很可爱，可爱意。Cute. Does anybody say coot? Coot means something else. You can look it up yourself. C O O T. Coot. 有一些不太好的意思。All right, so. K 后面 and、uh, let's try another one. That leaves.、Um, how about P? How about 纯粹 We don't say poor. <laughs> That becomes a different word, pure. So you can see it's a pattern. 是在这些很强势的，就是舌尖音 alveolar 的 consonants 后面 u 的 y 省略了 In most cases in American English. So when you keep insisting on during and due. And tube, it sounds very funny to our ears. It's a 很怪，所以我是建议你们那个又要拿掉。And as I've mentioned before, it is also not tube and do in British English either. It's not that way in British English. Almost nobody says to and do either in America or in Britain, unless they're trying to be extremely pedantic. How do we pronounce tube in British? It's not tube. Yes, please. Tube. Tube. What what kind of process is that? Why is the mega T 会变 Ch 的音 We just gave you the name for it. Palatalization. Because of palatalization, it became affricated. 它就变成一个色差音 Tube. Everyone, tube. Tube. And I'm pretty confident of that because I've been through this many times with my British teacher. So the underground. In London, we call it a subway. They call it the tube. Tube, right? And 露水 is dew. Dew. Now, I just read something on Facebook. Facebook is actually a good source of data. That's another excuse to spend all your time there. This story comes from the. A Facebook post of an American friend of mine who teaches pronunciation. I've never met her in person, but we've talked over email and over Facebook. And she heard a song. She heard a song on on British radio called "The Foggy Jew." She heard a song called "The Foggy Jew," and she thought that was a very funny name for a song. A Jew is Yul Tai Ren. She heard it sung over and over again. The one I know is the foggy, foggy Jew, but she just wrote the foggy Jew. She heard this song, the foggy Jew. All right, 跟犹太人有关吗 ？No, what was it? It was the foggy dew. An American? Oops. Yeah. Let me try that D again. <clears throat> In American, it's just dew, and it sounds the same as dew. In British, it's pronounced as not T. Sorry, we have to go to D here. In British, it's pronounced Jew. All right. So nobody says Jew. 
Nobody says that. I can't say by fence by nobody, but most people, at least the standard varieties, 标准的不管美式英式都不念 do. Do, do. Aren't you shocked? <laughs> Yeah, you learned it wrong in school again. Okay, it's not really wrong. It's a theoretical pronunciation because it's old. Okay. What about tutor? Tutor. Tutor. Listen to I C R T. Tutor. What do they call it? My, my E T. Tutor. Some don't she? They have. What do they call it? Tutor A B C. Tutor A B C. That's it. Yeah. Do they say tutor? If you go like this, that means you're not listening. That means you're not listening. You hear it in your environment all the time. You're hearing it all the time. I want to put this on the video that you look so shocked. That's really useful to other people, because other people probably are equally shocked. <laughs> I'm just surprised because I assume some. 对我来说是天经地义的事情。啊，对你来说，你们有别的天经地义的事情。That's what happens when you get married, by the way. Let me warn you. <laughs> That's exactly what happens when you get married. But isn't it this way? What do you mean? What do you mean? Someone's like this. <laughs> what happens when you get married? Who told the crazy key to sit? Be ready for that. So always, and don't be shy. Be a bad little girl. Do you have a good story for us? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They are different things. Oh, so <laughs> Xiaoyu has nothing. To... And it's like no, this is Xiaoyu. That's a great story. Just Xiaoyu and Xiaoyu are no connection. One is I can understand why they feel that way. Yeah, that's a really good story. Except when you get married, 比那个严重的事情很多 Okay, 比方说如果带孩子之类的 you have different ideas.、Um, but that's an interesting story because which do you prefer? Do you like yellow or do you like red, or do you like both? I prefer red. I prefer red. I I like Xiao Yu is fine, but often it's not very soft. It's not very sweet. 红的通常是蛮甜的 ，but anyway, that's an interesting story. That somebody has an idea, and then you argue with them, and they'll they will not be convinced because they're already so sure. All right. So as we were saying, in American we do not say do, we say do. In British they don't say do either. They say do. Now, this applies to the other alveolar sounds. The t n l e s. We don't have to worry about z because I can't think of anything with z plus u. Z u 好像没有这样的音 So the t o n a l plus z is all I can think of. Now, something funny has happened. This sound has now disappeared from American speech. It's gone. So what does that mean about this? 这个就提供了另外一个 variation 的可能性 And something funny happens in English, similar to something funny that happens in Mandarin. You often hear people saying, "I don't want to do it, do it," or "one, two, three." Listen to how people say the word "two." This one, should that was that ever pronounced "two" at any point in England in the history of English? T W O. 他上来有没有念 two 的时候 ？From the spelling, you can see if it's if it's going to be a u pronunciation, we will either have e w or e. I'm sorry, or u or u e. Usually, it's u with a final e, or the e is right after it, like do, d u e, or like m u t e mute, or do d e w. So if it's going to have a y diphthong. It will usually be one of these, but if it's T W O, no, and if it's D O, was that ever pronounced do? No, never. However, you now hear people say one, two, three, and put on your shoe. Now that sounds like Taiwan English, but native speakers say it too. How did I find out? I started correcting my students who kept saying shoe. And one two, 
I corrected them. That means I was paying attention to it. And then I listened to radio, English radio. And what did I hear? Native speakers are doing it too. Two. <laughs> it's possible. Listen to native speakers saying these sounds. Sounds that should not have the U diphthong. They now sometimes do because there is no longer any distinction between do and do. 不分的情况之下,全部都念do. 所以变成一个多余的音我们没有在用。所以有时候高兴,两个都可以换这个音来念。好玩. Or it just happens, 因为do反正闲置在那里,没有人在用。Do跟do已经不分了。So,念do也好,念do也好,这个do也可以放在不该念do的地方。now, it's similar to something in Mandarin. What happens in Mandarin? You hear people say things like, 1,2,3,4,5,6,7,8,9,10. Nothing struck you as strange. 1,2,3,4,5,6,7,8,9,10. Yeah. Have you ever heard somebody say 蓝色? Yes. 1,2,3,4,5,6,7,8,9,10. 有。what do we call that? Hypercorrection. Now, Chongwanda No, That means Start paying attention. Listen to the Mandarin around you. You will hear it all the time. But especially in certain situations, especially <coughs> when people are trying to sound authoritative. I hear it often in Guanggao. Guanggao Okay, I wrote a whole paper about it. Go to Karen, Karen's uh, personal links. What is your personal links? Publications. There's a whole paper about it. Because you no longer distinguish them so clearly, this is 可以套用在支持上面,而且它还带有一个意思是什么?就是很正式,authoritative。当你突然间要装很正式的枪的时候,你可能就会开始支持时,可是这些支持时常常放错地方。因为支跟支现在不大分了。That's what happens,所以支持时本身已经没有分支跟支的功能,它的功能是 做个标签,现在的这场言论,谈论,这是正式的。它变成一个标签,这是正式的标签。Do you understand what I'm saying? It marks formal speech. When you're trying to sound important or formal or authoritative, you will use 支持诗. There are other reasons for it. The 文章里面有提到, and that is, sometimes you use it to 强调, 把音念得很清楚的时候, 大家没有听得很清楚,你可能就会把这知识念出来。我讲的是知道的知,不是资料的知,你要跟对方讲清楚是什么。或者你就是做一个等于是用粗体字来讲一个东西。One okay? whole lecture a student told me was about 智障。So every time she said 智障, it was very 智障, very clear. <laughs> yeah, 所以他等于是做一个 Highlighting的功能,就是让那个东西特别清楚,让它显,比较显著。Alright,文章你会看到其他的东西. I'm just saying, we seem to have something like hypercorrection in English now with this, the di disappearance of this diphthong after alveolar sounds. Do, you also want to do. Okay, one, two, three, you hear it. And I didn't want to believe it, but I've listened for about 10 years now, and it really exists, they really do that. All right, let's go. Let's finish. We can finish before the bell, maybe. Mm, go. The impulses of some forms of are as likely to be by as by a of the Okay, let's understand what we're right, what we're saying. Implosives in some kinds of hausa 
they may have actually a downward movement of the glottis, that's a real implosive. Buh. Buh. Downward movement of the glottis, that's an implosive. That's where you do that. But they may also be marked by what? Creaky voice. Uh, so it might be buh as well as buh. They may have either one or both. Okay? Or may one or the other. I don't, I don't think it's both. It's one or the other. Go. And Zulu has weak adjectives that could well be considered simply as father sound superimposed on plosives. All right. And that happens in Georgia as well, especially if it's not the initial. So, ta, ta, patara, patara. They have, they have a glottal stop in there. You have a glottal stop that somehow is not quite an adjective. It's just like a glottal stop. Instead of being ah, it becomes ah, ah. A glottal stop with a T. If it's not clear, ask me next class because we're out of time today. And then finally. All right, so we didn't mark the exercises today. We're going to mark them on Wednesday. Come well prepared. And Vivian, if you had trouble with some of them, ask classmates. I would like you to do your best so we can get through them quickly and solve as many problems as possible. So let me tell you about next time. So first of all, um, to finish up this, we're going to go through this table very carefully. Do it on your own. Put it in your assignments. Go through this table because this is a summary of everything we've done. I want you to make sure you understand each one. You can hear it correctly, and hopefully you can pronounce it. Some of them maybe you can't pronounce yet, but try. But at least you need to be able to hear them correctly. And um, so that will finish the chapter. We'll go through the exercises, including the oral performance exercises. So go through those as well. Measure carefully for the written exercises. Make a little. Uh, ruler yourself, just use a pencil and make a little piece of paper and then measure them carefully yourself. Performance exercises, practice those yourself before class. That will finish the chapter. If we have time, we'll go on to consonantal gestures. We'll start chapter 7. We will have a test on chapter 6 next Monday. Chapter 6 on Monday, next Monday. Okay. Um, and Wednesday, of course, you also have vowels and consonants, chapter 11. Bring your questions. Have them, please, ready fast. We have a lot of things to do in class. Please be really ready with your questions and your summaries. Hand those in. And in addition, what else do we have to do? We will probably also have a dictation. Um, I will think about that. I think we will have a dictation. We need more practice because you're getting the sounds but some, there are still some problems. I can see from your scores, some of you still have problems. So we'll probably have another um, dictation on Wednesday with real words from a real language. Okay? Um, that takes care of us till Wednesday. We'll see you then. <laughs>